Uh, to give you an idea of our base alignment, uh, this is what you'll typically see. And today, a lot of what we're going to talk about is really versus spread teams. Uh, that's most of what we see now. I think we had six out of our ten regular season games last year were against some version of a spread football team. Um, that primarily a 10P one back type set, um, and then two others were actually based out of like a 20P. So even then, certainly elements of spread. If we get some type of a 10P one back set in our in our defense, you're going to see the strength of our formation of our defense. We're going to have a six, a kind of a ghost six out on an imaginary tight end. We're going to play a three to that side, and then to the weak side we play a shade. Now, one thing we do differently here in our four-man front is we do play a five-man box. Um, we think and, and believe we can be successful playing a five-man box. I know most coordinators on the offensive side of the ball say, oh, you know, we see five-man box, we're going to run it down your throat. We challenge teams to do that. Uh, if, if they can overpower us, we feel like we have answers and things we can do. But uh, we have not seen very many teams that have been able to line up and run it down our throat and challenge our five-man box and get us out of it. Uh, to the weak side, so that we stay gap sound, we will play our defensive end and a head up four. If he gets a run block, he will fit inside into B gap so that the ball spills out to the linebacker. If he gets a high hat, he's going to activate outside and get into his traditional pass rush. So this is the structure of our defense versus a 2 by 2 10 10P set. Uh, you can see we have the strength set down here to the bottom of the screen. Uh, defensive end is not extremely wide, but you've got a three technique right next to him, a shade over the ball, and then a head up on the weak side. Uh, one thing that we think is, you know, is the age-old question of was was coverage aided by pressure? Or was the pressure aided by coverage? Um, you know, one thing we do with that, and one of the reasons we play this five-man box is we feel like against, for instance, this two by two set that walking our linebackers out and, and, and apexing that difference between the receiver and the offensive line, it takes away green grass. It, it doesn't leave quick holes where they can just rear up and throw the football, and that adds to our pass rushes. It means the quarterback should have to hold the ball longer and gives us a better chance of getting home and really connecting in our pass rush. Uh, our traditional pass rush, um, just base call for us, we're lining up, we're playing football, and they get a hi-hat read, and they're activating. There's a few things that we ask our kids to know. Okay, First off, we want our kids to understand and know the offensive tendency. Down and distance. Is it a rundown? Is it a passing down? Formation-wise, is there any tendency that tells them run or pass? Those are things that we, you know, D-linemen can recognize. They're also things that our back seven can help communicate to our defensive line. We had a player last year that was primarily our three technique, played some shade for us, that was outstanding at understanding and recognizing tendency based on down and distance and formation. And there are times on film where you can see him, he's the last man to get into a stance because he's trying to help tell everybody else what's about to happen. And uh, a lot of times he's right. Uh, obviously with offensive line, you know, and defensive line, one thing we try to look at is stance. Um, we have seen teams before where any time the ta left tackle's hand was on the ground, it was run, and any time he was in a two-point stance, it was pass. It's not an easier tell for our guys to recognize, and it's an easy thing for them to, to pick up. A couple years ago, we played the team that every time the quarterback's feet were square in the shotgun, it was run or some type of package play, and every time he's, his feet were staggered and his, I believe, right foot was back, it was 100% pass. And again, things that are easy for us to pick up on film and easy for our kids to pick up during the course of the game. Uh, throughout the week, we talked to our D-line about knowing the quarterback. Is he a statue in the pocket? Is he a kid that is going to sit in there and when he does get out of the pocket, is it very fast? And the kid we feel like we can track down, he would rather sit in the pocket and throw the football. Uh, if he is, then they know they can take a few more chances that containing the pocket, although we still want to do it, is not nearly as important as playing a kid that can run around all day. So when we're playing a mobile quarterback, they have to know that. They have to understand how that affects their rush and maybe what we're asking them to do. Uh, players have to understand their gap. You know, when can I go inside? Is somebody else coming into my gap? No different than playing the run game. We need them to understand where we expect their rush lane to be and what gap we're expecting them to maintain and control in our pass rush. Uh, we always tell the kids, don't run past the quarterback. If you run past the quarterback, you have to be able to have the ability to turn, 
retrace and work past the ball. You know, there's no point in a pass rush that looks great in the first two steps, but then runs straight up field and, and never does anything to condense the pocket and put pressure on the quarterback. And then finally, you have to understand when you're contained. Um, if you come free, we talk a lot to our kids about rushing the upfield shoulder, not going square at their back, not working to the downfield shoulder to give them an opportunity to bail out of the pocket. One of the things, you know, we would rather have guys step up in the pocket into our pressure than we would have guys bail out and try and get to the edge because now you put our secondary in a much bigger bind. So those are five of the things that we really focus on with our defensive linemen as far as understanding their responsibility in pass rush. So here's a look from last season. Uh, this is just our traditional pass rush. We don't have any games called. Our three technique knows he's got a little bit of freedom that if A-gap opens up for him, he can take it. At the same time, our shade knows he's very likely to get clamped by the guard in the center and to work a double team with their eyes somewhere on the backer um, you know, looking to see if we bring pressure. As little pressure as we bring, that, that shade really ends up having a tough job some nights. And against mobile quarterbacks, we spend a lot of time, you know, talking about where his eyes need to be and what he needs to be prepared to do. But looking at this, you see up top, we get good get off by the defensive end. You can see him. His pads are high, but watch him dip and rip underneath the arm pad of that right tackle and now start to work his edge. And the tackle does a good job of, of, of getting leverage and getting depth and, and really does a decent job here on the defensive end, but he keeps working. He keeps working. Now, down here at the bottom, we get double teamed on our end down here, which was a, a kid that was a really outstanding pass rusher for us. And as he works, he gets double teamed, so he works inside of it, knowing that he's got the boundary to his outside, it's not an extremely mobile quarterback, and he's a kid that if he is going to flush, we want him to flush to the left. It's one of the things we worked on and talked about a lot this week, that he was more comfortable flushing right than he was left. To, um, so we want him going to our left, or excuse me, our right, his left. So he works back inside and works the pressure back to our other end. The nose does a good job of pushing vertically in the pocket, working off the double team, and not giving the quarterback a great window to step up and throw the football. Okay, here's another clip. Again, our four-man front versus a 10P. And, you know, probably the sixth element that I didn't mention when I was giving you kind of our rules for defensive linemen is sometimes you just got to be a dog. And, and, and we talk about that, being a stinking rabid dog that when the quarterback's holding on to the football or if he gets out of the pocket, about being that guy that's got such great effort and such great energy that you're just going to be a dog. Here we get great rush off of both outside players, but we don't get much out of the inside players off the snap of the ball. They do a good job. Quarterback steps up, he flushes the pocket, but be a dog. Guys are relentlessly pursuing the quarterback. We do a good job on the back end and not giving up anything free, and we're able to get home and get to the quarterback with our pressure. Being tenacious in pass rush is one of the uh, one of the elements that can truly be a game changer, especially if you're playing with a guy that's maybe a little undersized. You know, we'd all love to coach the John Randalls of the world. Um, we don't always get a chance to coach, you know, the 300-pounders, but if you can have a poor man's John Randall that's just absolutely relentless and will get to the quarterback, then I'll take those all day. Okay? Uh, one of the things we talk about a little bit with our guys are what we call a natural. Uh, you'll see it here to the top of the screen. Um, as our three technique starts his rush, for some reason he thinks he can spin inside. It's a move that worked for him a lot, and he's got some freedom as the three technique to take a gap if he thinks he's getting overset. And what happens here is he spins inside and gets stopped. And in the rush of our end, as he gets to the level of the quarterback, he spins inside, and the quarterback's able to evade. We will work in the summer and in our preseason camp and throughout the season of as a defensive tackle understanding that if my end crosses my face inside, I can now evade to the outside and become our contained rush. Because as this defensive end works inside and he takes that gap, the quarterback is most likely going to bail. So watch the three technique here. As he sees it, he spins. He can't get there, but he sees the end inside. He fights over the top and now gets rushed, and he doesn't get the sack, but he forces a bad throw, and he gives the quarterback from throwing on the level plane. He doesn't give him a good, 
a good pocket to throw in. He really makes him throw off balance, which gives our corner a chance to break on the play and get a big interception and a big game to, to help change momentum.